On the breakfast, federal government plans 1.35 trillion naira war chest against Boko Haram bandits to acquire fighter jets, ammunition, and budgets 1 billion naira for terrorist persecution. Also on the breakfast, there are high indications that gas prices will further increase and Nigerians may pay more as marketers hint of high exchange rate of the dollar to the Naira. And don't forget, we'll all so be looking through uh, today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful morning right here. And uh, the holiday has ended, so, well, I'm sure that you're back at your office uh, or probably you're on your way to the office. However it is, I hope you have a fantastic day. As always, uh, we start off with a top trending conversation on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Messier Bokwo. Quite interesting and fantastic is that this is part of the season. Politicking has started. The campaigns already have started ahead of the 2023 you know, elections. And so you're going to have uh, and see the gladi gladiators and all of the actors you know, come together for a common purpose. Well, the People's Democratic Party, that's the PDP flag of its presidential campaign in Uyo, the Aquaibum State Capital, at the Nest of Champions Stadium. And, you know, to, to this event, a lot of persons were sent invitation. Now, those who were invited were party leaders and members across all categories, including former president uh, that, that were produced by the party. And so you had the likes of Chief Olushegun Obasanjo, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, former vice president Namadi Sambo, others that were invited, also former Senate President David Mack, uh, the likes of Adolphus Mwabara, Pius, Pius Ayim, uh, Dr. Abubakar Bukala Saraki, and all members of the Board of Trustees and members of the National Executive Committee and Party. But whether or not you have all of these persons attending, you know, the campaign or being part of the campaign, because it was a flag of, and, it, you know, as it was. Now, and I expected that event also where, you know, governor, former governors, ministers, all former presidential aspirants and what have you, it was more like let all come together, members of the National Assembly. But uh, just before then, the high point of it, which we'll come back to eventually, uh, is whether or not those who were invited for this event attended the event. Okay, uh, that's the high point of it, whether they attended the event. But we will talk about this, you know, uh, on the other path, just before we call it a wrap. But one of the things, he, the reason we talk about our top trending is that, you know, it, it has a lot of engagement and what have you. And so yesterday, Twitter and social media had a lot of bores. People were talking about it on and off social media. And one of the things people talked about was the crowd. If you see the crowd, I mean, it's a lot. It looks very beautiful, uh, very colorful, uh, you know, pretty very organized, if you want to say. But a lot of Nigerians have taken to social media to talk about the fact that, you know, this crowd is a rented crowd. Some people say that uh, some persons were transported. I mean, it's purportedly said, because well, no evidence of all of that, that this crowd was actually rented. That you had the PDP transporting persons from different parts of the country just to showcase the image. Don't forget that there's a lot that's going on, yeah, with, uh, you know, uh, the rallies, you have different political parties putting up the rallies, uh, supporters throwing their support to different candidates that they are supporting, especially for the presidential elections. And so uh, a lot of Nigerians took to social media, like I rightly stated, and some people are saying, hey, this crowd is actually rented. Because for every other time you have seen a political move or rally, there's a crowd, whether it's of the PDP, it's of the APC, it's of the Labour Party, there's always a crowd everywhere. And so people uh, started, you know, tweeting and saying, this crowd for the PDP, especially when they started off their flag of uh, Aquaibum State, uh, the campaigns, that the crowd was rented. People were transported from different parts, you know, of the country to converge at that particular spot. Uh, we haven't been able to verify all of that, but that's what's been said. But however, 
another one because we had videos that made it also that uh, <laughs> you know uh, surfaced on the internet especially on Twitter and so some other persons were saying that the crowd that you had there were chanting the songs for Peter Obi you know Obi Kiri Kiri I, I don't remember the songs but something like that you know right so I mean it's been a lot right but However it is, whatever it is, we need to understand that uh, at the end of the day, so whether you have a crowd or don't have a crowd, uh, that might not necessarily translate into, you know, the number of votes and what have you. But it would also be important that we pay attention, uh, you know, to the crux of the matter, that the campaign season starts with uh, issue-based kind of campaign. I mean, we should keep it very clean and be very sensitive and abide by the laws. So we come back to the high point just before we move away from that. Is that five state governors, including Governor Yesom Wike, that of Rivers State, uh, Samuel Otom of Benue State, Okezie Piazu of uh, Abia State, and Shei Makindi of Oyo State, Ifanyi Uguwai of Enugu State, all of these five governors pulled out of the party's presidential campaign team after the party failed to meet their demand. And however, we, you know, if you look at the uh, findings and all of the reports, and if you also monitor you were there, uh, these persons were not available. And so uh, let's not forget that Governor Wike has been on uh, the issue of the removal of the national chairman, uh, Iocha Ayu, and uh, the all... PDP former president. Some people are saying that, you know, if you're talking about former president or vice president or what have you, you say uh, former governor Olusegun Obasanjo and uh, others. You say the deputy national chairman. Some people are saying, oh, all former PDP presidents were not present. Deputy national chairman of the South, PDP national women leader, a national vice chairman of South as well. And uh, what have you were not available at the party. And so these are uh, persons who are loyal to Wiki, but that narrative is entirely not true. I mean, you can't say that the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, is loyal to, you know, Wiki. Let's not forget that he tore his um, party card. He said he wasn't going to be partisan and all of that. But these were persons, if you talk about the boycott of uh, the campaign, that were not present. Some of these persons were not present. And it's been a lot of conversation whether or not the presence of these persons would actually affect, you know, the outcome of the elections, uh, you know, for 2023. But we will, you know, keep our fingers crossed and we'll watch and see what pans out. Another on the top trending is that Serb sues the federal government over illegal oil pipelines. That's the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project uh, called Serb. They have threatened uh, to sue the president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, and his administration over the illegal oil pipelines that's been discovered in the country. And they say, in quote, we're suing Buhari administration over discovery of illegal oil pipelines. Uh, that statement was made via Twitter handle. And however, uh, there's also another action they're compelling the Nigerian government to name those responsible for plundering the country's oil wealth and bringing them to justice and also recovering the proceeds of crime. But, you know, so it's been a lot of back and forth. Now, recently we hear that, you know, vessel that's conveying the product was actually set ablaze and all of that. I really don't know how these things can be when uh, some persons have, you know, taken to social media the thoughts of that. It's, it's Sarab really, as much as Sarab might be doing a lot, they have actually gained that recognition, but some persons have described Sarab as, a, a, you know, a toothless dog. They just bark and they cannot bite. Because with all of these court injunctions and suing and threat to sue, uh, how many court cases do we have against the president? Are these really any issues? Have this really yielded any result? These are the thoughts that you have, you know, on social media, but also not taking out the real issue. I mean, if we say that we have found illegal, uh, you know, pipelines we have discovered, apparently the persons involved in all of this are not spirit. It would just be for the sake of transparency. And especially when uh, President Mohammed Buhari said, hey, my government 
is going to be very big on the fight against corruption. One would expect that uh, the names of this, who, those who are involved or who have been involved in this illegal activity and also have been costing, uh, have cost the country a lot of resource and funding should, you know, be published. It shouldn't be, you know, rocket science, really. And that's it. Fire also got Kogi headquarters. It's very saddening. It feels like we're, you know, living in trying times. Part of the Kogi State House of Assembly. Although you have different quarters saying, oh, the entire assembly was, you know, gutted by fire, but it's not the entire part of the uh, House of Assembly complex in Lokoja was gutted by fire. And uh, it was uh, said that uh, at the time, whatever cost the fire, uh, you know, the cost of the fire was not a certain. And so... Uh, the security guard that was actually present at the time said the fire started at 7 a.m. However, you have stakeholders. The speaker had come out to say it would not affect the sitting because the mace is not affected. And you know that the mace is a symbol of authority. As long as you have the mace, whether you have it in our studios right here in Victoria Island, you can have, you know, legislative activities going on. And so uh, that's what makes the legislative sitting very prominent. It's a good thing to know that that's not the case, but it's really unfortunate and quite saddening that at this time uh, you have a fire incident. What is our response? When we talk about response to fire issues and incident, uh, how have we responded as a country? I can't really categorically say that um, and as a country because every other time we get incident of fire, uh, you know, fire happenings in different parts of the country, but do we have fire services or fire service in each of the states? And so my question would be in Kogi state, in Kogi where a, a, a part of the National Assembly was gutted by fire, where was the fire service? Where was the fire service? If the fire started at 7 a.m., was the call put, put across? And even in the building, one would expect that there should be some fire alarm that, uh, you know, would help the people understand that there probably might just be a fire outbreak. We see that a lot. And so do we have a building that is sensitive, that's actually uh, been made to have all of the equipment necessary to help prevent all of these issues? Uh, some of the questions that we're asking, if the fire started at 7 a.m., uh, at what time was the fire put out? And these are some of the questions that we should be able to answer. Uh, over time, I have observed and I have witnessed that, you know, our fire response time is really nothing to write them about. And so you have fire incident and when you reach out to the fire service, I thought you, we don't have, you know, vehicle. And even if they do have a vehicle, they would probably say that there's no petrol and the vehicle to move the vehicle. Or probably they don't have water, you know, to take out the fire. This is a lot of excuses. And these are agencies, these are bodies of government that has been, you know, established. And I'm sure that there's a budgetary allocation every other time. What's really going on? I know that we can do better as a country, just hoping that, you know, we get it right. But it's quite unfortunate that all of this is happening, you know, to Kogi states at this point in time. I had sent a prayers with them, and we're hoping that the government of the day will swing into action and arrest the situation. And we'll be proactive. You know, every other state will sit up and take a lesson, one or two lessons from what has happened. Well, that's so much we can take this at this point on our Top Trending. We take a break, and when we return, it will be time for us to go through the front pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Stay with us.